killed almost 400 people that day just for one person, one person ever. And this is why I say the mistakes we've made is costly on your life. And some of these mistakes you make will cost you a lifetime. And sometimes if you don't know how to get past them or know how to resolve them, you will never ever have relief in them. And most of the time they will end in catastrophic measures. Amen. That's why we must be really good listeners in God. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody, come on, keep reading. Turn aside from me these three times. If she had not turned aside from me, surely I would also have killed you by now and let her live. Now, this is where we come in a dilemma because we're trying to figure out, well, how can God do these things? Well, God has a mission. He's trying to accomplish, but he's looking for us to be precise when he speaks to us, especially the call. When God has called you to a duty or he has called you to ministry, you must take heed and you must listen and you must follow his instructions. And many of us don't want to do that. After God has called us out, we want to do it our own way, what's comfortable for us. But even when God throw the red lights up in the signs, we don't even stop. We just continue to go. Because it's what it feels like is right to us. Not what we know the truth, not what we know is right or wrong, but what we want to do. And this is what happened in, in Baal. And this is why the Lord, he, he talks about it. And, and many people say, well, you know what, no reverend, that's the Old Testament, everybody dealing with in the fire for No, let me tell you something. The beginning was the New Testament. The Old Testament was the beginning. When we got to the New Testament, that is where you should be at, completely almost finding yourself to be merging with Jesus Christ. Because you have learned all of God's ways. Amen. God has never threw out his beginning because you all have a beginning. Amen. And you can't throw out your beginning because you must learn from your mistakes. Amen. When we think about the Old Testament, there's a lot of stuff in it God had to do to the Israelites because they didn't listen. Because they didn't do right. But if we want to say, well, okay, well, this didn't happen here or life that doesn't change, ain't nothing changed. God the same yesterday as today. He has Amen. not changed. Now, how he feel about Baal and this, he talks about the people of this time and this day, too. He talks about them in the later chapters in the New Testament. He talk about people of Baal. And we're going to go there and spend a little time there because they're like natural group beasts made to be caught and destroyed. Amen. And many people trying to figure out, well, how is that? Well, when God has come to you and he has gave you instructions and he has given you a map and guidance for your life and you have not followed his instructions, then that's what you are like to him. A brute beast. He said you were made to be caught and destroyed because you have yet to do what you're supposed to do that he had put in your heart. Amen. Now at this point, God might have you saving somebody or he might have given you a way to help somebody prosper, but you didn't follow your instructions. So therefore, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Amen? Amen. All right, keep on reading. 34, right? Amen. All right, then read. And Bella said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I did not know you stood in the way against me. Now, therefore, if it is you, I will turn back. Well, you would think even in that, that knowing that God might, it might be an opportunity or a chance that God might take you out of here, you will surely do right even from this far. Because right now, God has already sent you warnings. So he's a merciful God. Amen. And God, you cannot say the people that left this world, God didn't give them many chances. Amen. And I like to say that the chances he didn't gave me, the various things that happened to me, down to you get to that last chance. And most of us don't take heed to when we get to the last chance. Now, I like to, to say that, you know what, everything going to work out for your life. Everything going to be perfect in your life. Whatever you might have done, it's going to work out. <laughs> But then I'll be lying to you. Would you want your reverend to lie to you and tell us it's all peachy and creamy in life? Make the huge mistakes? i tell you what you do. Think about people past. Think about the people that have left this world that's two times younger than you. Think about them. Think about the ones that have perished, car accidents, plane accidents, many, many ways. Let me tell you something. Nothing happened in this world as God is powerful. Amen. And nothing can be done without him. Amen. So we might somehow think it's just a coincidence. Nothing is a coincidence. It's either to make you or break you. It's to make you or break you. Amen. God said he gives you the opportunity. They have blessings and curses. It's up to you. You make that decision. Amen. 
So on this point, Baal didn't want to do what he was supposed to do because he was more willing to please Balak. Well, Balak was doing a lot of begging at this time. He was begging really hard. I guess many people want to be blessed, but you gonna have to. He didn't want to do the work for it, though. See, we want to be blessed, but we don't want to do the work. It's the same thing in repentance. We want repentance, we want forgiveness, but we don't want to go back and clean the mess up. Amen. But see, this is where we come in with Bay Balak. He wanted them to be. He wanted them to be surely blessed. He wanted Moab and them to be blessed, but they didn't want to do the work for it. They didn't want to do the things that Israel was doing. Well, God loved Israel. That was his, 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 his pet peeve. But Moab wanted the same thing, but Moab wanted to worship them, 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 them uh, uh, statues and, and, and all that fornication they was doing. God wasn't, he wasn't with that. So why do you want my servant to come and bless you when you're doing all the things that's against me? But that one had... Something different. He didn't want to do the right thing. Amen? Amen. New faith. Keep reading. Then the angel of the Lord said to them, Go with me, that you should speak to them. Amen. So, so he, he, gave, he said it again, right? Let's make sure. Let's read it again. Let's make sure we understand it. Amen? One more time. Ready and read then go with me, but only the word that you shall speak. All right, now he had another opportunity to sound like the same thing God said to him in the beginning, right around in verse 20. Mm -hmm. Ain't too much shy of this other than action and speaking. Now, the other one was action, right? Action means something you must do. Speaking means something you will say. Amen. But even as words being brought to us, are we really listening to the instructions? Or are we just hearing it but not listening? Because once you're listening, you're going to what? Do. But if you're hearing and you're not listening, you ain't going to do. Amen. Now remember, I said before, it's a situation where you what? You are hearing, but you're not listening. Now in this instructions, he must speak what he need God to tell him to they like, right? So when we get ourselves in a position like this, what do we do? Do we listen? Do we not pay attention? Or we continue to make the same mistakes? But see, I think even at this point, is he confused? Maybe we get confused and still don't know if we're going right or left. Mm -hmm. But at some point in time, it should strike us, which is the righteous requirement, will come in and cause us to, to dictate righteously. Amen. Amen. Watch this, 36, ready and read it. Now, now when Balak heard that Balaam was coming, he went out to meet him at the city of Moab, which is the border of the boundary of the territory. Of the territory. All right. Keep reading. And then Balak said to Balaam, Did I not earnestly send to you, calling for you? Why did you not come to me? I am not able to honor you. Now hold it one, one, one minute here. Now you see here where the wicked one is beginning to come in and use various things. I mean that we have, or we might be deciding we're going to do right. And most of us decide we're going to do right in life. We're going to follow instructions. And all of a sudden we hear something. And you know what we do? We change direction. We do that. Keep reading. Right where we stopped at, keep reading. And the man said to Balak, Look, I have come to you. Now I have any power at all to say anything. The word that God puts in my mouth, that I must speak. Amen. Now he know that he need to speak the word that God put in his mouth. But even all of that, without even going through everything here, I want y'all to skip here and go through 23 to 27. And I want you to hear this. Because... All of this from chapter 23 down is them going back and forth, whether he's going to be blessed, is he going to bless them or not, is he going to follow instructions, or what are he going to do? But let's come on down to 23, verse 27, and we're going to read, which will be on your next page, or download and when you're at, amen? Amen. amen. Y'all ready? Amen. And read. Then, then Bela said, said to Bela, please, please come. come. I will take you to another place. Perhaps, Perhaps it will please God. 
that you may press him for me from there. All right, so see, he had not stopped. 